Hi, this is the third in a weekly uh, series of vlogs I'm going to do, which is cataloguing my journey towards, hopefully, fingers crossed, achieving a double body weight squat uh, at the age of 42, having never done this before uh, in my life, although I have been squatting for some time. So this is the start of the third week of training, uh, having been trained for, for the past two weeks. So my, my first thoughts when I first started training was I just need to get back into the routine of doing things uh, and addressing body composition issues. Um, so I'm not going to touch on the body composition stuff because that's been something I spoke about for about two weeks. So I'm going to give that two or three weeks and then maybe kind of touch back and, and check on progress there. The focus of, of what we'll talk about today really is about once you start training, how do you then think about progressions within a program or rather than kind of following it kind of blindly or just kind of like, right, here's my program on week one. I'm going to follow that no matter what happens and, and that's uh, what I'm going to do. Because that actually might not be reality and that might not be reflective of your circumstance or all your training uh, changes. So I knew at the beginning that I was very much detrained. I've not done anything since the lockdown. Um, and so the first two weeks were going to be a bit of a journey into the unknown. And I was knowingly conservative. I didn't really want to push myself. I didn't want to get so sore that I didn't want to feel like I could train after so long of missing training. So two weeks in now, it started to get to the point where, right, I need to think about how do I um, change the program to be more reflective of where I am now as opposed to where I was at the beginning two weeks ago, of course. When you first start training, changes can be quite rapid. So what I tried to do the first couple of weeks was squat twice a week um, and minimise the amount of eccentric activity, I kind of how much lowering I have to do with the weight, because that can be quite um, DOMS-inducing, that can create a lot of soreness. But I kind of two weeks in now, done, done two last two sessions, I've had no soreness whatsoever, so there's kind of a bit of indication there that I could probably up my volume and be, be a little bit less conservative. But how do you make that jump? How do you transition the program from where you are now where it's, it's a bit too conservative, but you're not getting sore? I feel I make some progress, but again, that could be expected from having done nothing. How do you get that next step up, both in terms of how do you change the actual program design and how do you change the load safely to get the right, the right load for you? So I'm going to talk about a couple of things I'm going to do um, over the next couple of weeks to, to try and transition from where I am now to where I need to be. So I'm just going to bring this up a little bit bigger if I can. So um, the top uh, schedule was where uh, I was last week. So again, it was those two squat sessions on a Monday and a Friday. I had a, a pull day on the Wednesdays so that was clean pulls and then it was some isometric work with a rear foot elevated split squat. And then like an upper body uh, resistance training day with, with some cycle um, uh, activity um, and then uh, an 8k run on the Sunday that was just Sunday gone and that was brutal having backed off the running for a little bit and gone backwards massively um, in terms of uh, my, my running so that was a bit of a kind of wake up call I need to kind of think about that so I don't want to lose too much of my running fitness although it isn't my priority but it's a good way to maintain body composition as well get the fat get the fat mass down so what I need to do, first of all, is increase the amount of squatting activity and general leg activity that I want to get to. So here's a bit of a plan. And it may be a bit of variability. So I want to talk about where that variability might come in, uh, depending on how this week goes. So I've gone into three squatting days. So that's Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Um, so again, just I've added a third squatting day. So hopefully that will add... Um, a bit of extra capacity to, to my kind of squat training and hopefully uh, maintain some improvements. I don't want to lose the pulling day. I quite like weightlifting. Weightlifting would be my sport of a preferred choice, so I don't want to lose that. And again, I think it's quite a good complementary exercise to squatting anyway. It, it targets that kind of mid-range where squatting, obviously, you're going to get your most uh, inertia at the bottom of the squat. You're going to get the most benefit at the bottom of the squat. Where if you're doing a clean pulling, it's kind of that mid-range, which would normally be kind of Corresponding to about halfway up the squat, so I think it complements it from a biomechanical point of view as well. Plus, also, it doesn't have that eccentric uh, DOMS effect. So, my initial kind of worst case plan would be to squat Monday, do a pulling and upper body day Tuesday, squat on Wednesday, rest day Thursday, uh, squat again Friday, and then have another pulling day on Saturday. Now, that's basically adding another two leg sessions to the week. Uh, and third of all oh, sorry and add, adding a third squatting session so the same uh, so an extra squatting session plus two um pulling days so that, that's an opportunity where that might be too much so what i need to do there is look at what happened how do i feel on saturday and is that additional squatting day 
uh, pulling day, sorry, needed. I might need to back off there. That's a kind of like all the good plans are, you make a good plan, but write it in pencil because it could often change. So that's the outline plan. But again, that could change. And what I'll probably do there is try to take that out or maybe probably put in a cycle activity there to, to add in the, the aerobic component. So I'm not kind of doing nothing, but I'm just not hitting the legs in terms of a strength training point of view. So that's how you would, might plan or move around in terms of ex exercise prescription, trying to where can you find those extra days of volume? How do you find that extra volume? What's the most important part for your volume? So what I'm trying to say there is I'm not want to cut out the squatting volume. That's my goal. That's my target. So if I need to pull volume out somewhere, it's going to have to be that pulling day on the Saturday. So that's that one part of, of, of the progression side of things. The next side of things I want to look at is um, the load part of it. So what, what exercise am I doing? Well, I'm going to talk about two bits of, of, of gadgetry that I'm, I'm using. Um, I'm a biomechanics and SNC lecturer, and I have been a, a coach uh, using this piece of kit. Uh, for a while now so it would be wrong for me not to kind of dig into this a little bit in terms of how I might use this in my own training. So I'm going to use two uh, pieces of technology that I think are going to be really helpful and, and game changes for most people in the applied space, not having big lab equipment, not having kind of 3D motion capture and massive great force plate stuck to the ground. The two pieces I'm going to talk about are output and, and push bands. Um, the both are, can have the option to look at how, how you move in specifically velocity, but I'm going to look at output and, and push using two different functions uh, that they have. So first of all, from an output point of view, um, what I've done with this one here is look at uh, its range of movement function, its degrees function. So when I want to progress squats, what I don't want to do is at the consequence or the cost of how I'm moving. So here we've got the last three repetitions of uh, um, my last set of 80 kilos today. So again, I've not squatted big numbers. So those people out there who think I'm, uh, uh, I'm mad for trying it, yeah, here's some proof. I'm trying to, I'm squatting 80 kilos at the start of a journey to double body weight squat. But here you can see at the end of the set, I'm kind of hitting above 80 degrees as a range of movement. That's, that's kind of my marker saying, I don't want to be kind of squatting any less than 80 degrees. Okay. Um, what I need to then do is make sure if I want to progress, those additional weights that I do don't come at the cost of range of movement. So if I go up a weight, I can go back to my output device and say, right, okay, I've, I've moved the weight. Um, I might be moving it as fast, and I'll come to velocity in a second, but am I moving it less? Has my range of movement suffered? Because that's something that we can't do. Uh, we can't compensate movement quality for her weight and, and velocity. So that's the first thing. And now I've got a benchmark that says, right, okay, if I'm squatting well, I'm squatting above 80 degrees. That's my range of movement. I want to do that. Um, and the guys output some fantastic resources out there about how you can do that. Basically, you have a, a little kind of Bluetooth device about this big. Uh, you strap it to your, to your upper thigh. You perform the squat and, and it goes to a tablet and that tablet then picks up your, your range of movement. So again, something that's a really, really useful function for coaches out there to be able to support their athletes remotely. And also just for your own personal point of view, make sure you're getting those quality reps in, not just doing half reps. Because no SNC coach likes a half rep. So the other part will be the velocity. And this is something that's probably more and more common in the marketplace at the minute. It's how to, to measure um, your movement velocity. And that indicates how hard you're working, how easy you're working. And if you're hitting the things you need to be hitting. So basically it works in a simple idea that the easier the weight is, the faster you can move it. And the heavier the weight is for you, the slower you move it. Down to around about 0 0.2 meters per second says you're kind of really grinding repetition now and it's, and it's really, really hard work. Um, if you're moving like one meter per second, you're absolutely flying and it's, it's really, really easy for you. That's more, more kind of power focused than it is strength focused. So I want to show you a little bit about kind of how I would think about using velocity based measurements to progress weight, with weight between sessions. So I've got a bit of a, a table here. So on the left hand column of those numbers, that's the uh, mean velocities for 10 repetitions at 80 kilos on Friday. And then uh, so that's the 23rd of April, and that was 0.54 meters per second. And then on today, uh, it was the 26th, it, the average was 0.55. Now, on the face of it, that's really small numbers. You might say, well, that's actually pretty much the same thing. So what I did is took the, the, the standard deviation of all those 20 numbers. And that's this pulled standard deviation here. This is where we start to get into our maths and statistics side of things. So the difference between sessions was 0.01 meters per second. So that's 0.54 uh, 
but to 0.55. So I was slightly faster today, uh, today than I was on Friday. And again, by 0.01 seconds. But we're not talking about really kind of big numbers here. We're talking about a small number. So that, that is something that would be expected. So actually, if you look at this change SD here, what that means is that's the, the amount of change between sessions compared to the variability within sessions. So I appreciate I might be losing some people here, but what what we say is a change of 0.2 standard deviations will be what's called the smallest worthwhile change. So for me to change load between sessions, what I'd be expecting to see would be that box turn green, as in the change between sessions in terms of how fast I was moving the bar was greater than the variability within the session. So you can see there, the numbers are a bit all over the place. So I'd have to have quite a big change relative to the number between sessions before I can say, yes, I've definitely gotten better. So the higher that number is there, okay. So anything above 0.2 means I've got a green light to go a little bit more. Now it's only just, I mean, really only like 0.01 above for the smallest worthwhile change. So I don't need to look at massive, massive increments. I'm only gonna go by five kilos there. If that was like a, a, a one, then there's a huge difference between what I was lifting on Friday and what I was lifting today. That gives me confidence I can go quite a bit in, in, in load. It's a very small difference. So we're looking at somewhere between a two and a half and a five kilo increase. From an RPE point of view, yeah, I didn't think it was, it was challenging, but it wasn't like I was gassed. And I was like, my legs were exploding and I felt like I, I could barely move. And not 0.55 is is the upper end of strength velocity as I could definitely kind of hit more. And I didn't really change much within the session, so I didn't really get much fatigue. If I go back to that table again, you can see here that 0.526 at the beginning and 0.533 at the end means i have not really, um, go back a second, not really changed much in the velocity. Whereas if I was getting tired, it might start at 0.55 and get down to like 0 0.45, 0 0.4. That wasn't happening in that set. So I've got plenty of scope there, I think, to get better and add more weight for the next session. So next session will be 85 kilos. So that's just kind of me using my sports science, my kind of biomechanics and SNC knowledge to, to apply a bit of a science-based approach to progressions. So what I can do now is, is use those both bits of kit um, on Wednesday, check my range of movement, change, check my velocity, uh, and also kind of my, my own perception of how hard it was and go, have I, have I got that right? Have I added enough load to add the challenge? Uh, without compromising my range of movement too much. Hope that's been interesting and useful to you all. And anyway, that's, that's out there watching. Hopefully that's interesting and helpful to you all.